in the last five years, uh, Quad has become a significant and substantive platform for four large resident Indo-Pacific vibrant democracies that are seeking to uphold an open and inclusive Indo-Pacific. Like any new mechanism or platform, the Quad too is a product of its times. It emerged from global necessities, faltered for some time due to a complexity of reasons, and was then reincarnated with new governments and different circumstances. Uh, Shinzo Abe in Japan was perhaps an exception, uh, which is a statement in itself. Now, as someone who's been long associated uh, with this enterprise, uh, allow me to share a few thoughts about its history, because there are important lessons to be drawn from it. The origins of the Quad go back to the tsunami response. Uh, this was an event which happened in late December 2004. I happened to be the coordinator for that response on the Indian side. In 2006, the idea of an, of the actual idea of an Quad was put forward by the then Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. But as I said earlier, uh, it unraveled within a year, and in fact, Abe himself had left office at that time. In 2017, after a full decade, Quad was resumed, uh, first at the Foreign Secretary's level, and then was upgraded in 2019 to the ministerial one. Coincidentally, I happened to be occupying both positions at that particular juncture. In 2021, we, all four of us, upgraded it to the summit level, and it has flourished since. And it's been my privilege to have participated in all the meetings that have taken place since then. And I say this to you because I have personally seen what difference leadership, vision, commitment, and most of all, strategic clarity can make. During this period, administrations have changed in all our partner countries. Ours has remained the same, and I guess will do so. Uh, but once the initiative was nurtured uh, through the initial stages and it took root, it has been truly remarkable to see how prolifically and rapidly the Quad has flubbered. Now, some of you know that uh, I have just brought out a book, and one chapter of that is devoted to my analysis of the emergence of the Quad. I believe that much of that arises from the remarkable changes in India's bilateral relationships with its three Quad partners. With the US, we put behind ideological hesitations of history. With Japan, we gave a long-standing goodwill much more practical shape. And with Australia, we actually made a real beginning in seriousness. Uh, Prime Minister Tony Abbott is here with us today, and I take the occasion to particularly recognize and commend his role uh, in giving our relationship that very serious form, which is, to me, uh, one of the uh, foundations for the Quad uh, that has uh, established itself. Now, the natural question that greets any new arrival uh, is the reason for their existence. So let's look at why the Quad. The answer is very simple. It is there for global good. It is there for the global commons. It is facilitated by the emergence of the Indo-Pacific, and it is propelled by a change in the global order that requires more, not less, collaboration among the like-minded. So you would then ask, what does Quad stand for? I believe it has five messages. One, it reflects the growth of a multipolar order Two, it is post-alliance and post-Cold War thinking. Three, it is against spheres of influence. Four, it expresses the democratizing of the global space and a collaborative, not unilateral approach. And five, it is a statement that in this day and age, others cannot have a veto on our choices. Now, this in turn would elicit the question, why the Indo-Pacific? And the answer, I think by now, is very clear. The post-1945 division of what till then was perceived to be a cohesive theater resulted in our contemplating the Indian Ocean and the Pacific one as two separate entities. This separation was an outcome of American strategic priorities in 1945. Ironically, it is America's repositioning today that is helping to rectify it. Why has the Quad grown so rapidly? That too is a uh, legitimate question today. The answer here is that all four governments have behaved differently from how they normally do. Quad is an overhead light, creative, flexible, nimble, responsive, and open-minded enterprise. These are not adjectives we normally associate with the bureaucracy. 
So even as we assess its achievements, some compliments at least are due to all those who have shepherded it, who have grown it, who have actually made it unfold with such rapidity. What have been the achievements and activities of the Quad? These naturally uh, focused uh, initially on addressing the region's most pressing needs and challenges. I'm speaking here about maritime security, infrastructure and connectivity, HADR, critical technologies, communication, space cooperation, cybersecurity, counterterrorism, fellowships, climate action, to name a few. The really notable aspect of this uh, is that at every meeting, we have actually taken agreed domains forward and have come up with new ones for cooperation. As my Australian colleagues just, colleague just reminded us, uh, the Quad has also come up by now with its vision as well as with its principles. So uh, in that sense, we have actually seen, even in the course of half a decade, uh, a maturing uh, of this particular mechanism. But allow me to dwell a little bit more on some of its recent activities. In critical technologies, Quad seeks to build resilient supply chains in telecom, cybersecurity, semiconductors, and AI. An open uh, RAN pilot is underway in uh, Palau as part of these efforts. We are also promoting cyber awareness and capacity building in the Indo-Pacific, which could be, which is vulnerable to cyber threats. Quad countries together have announced more than 1,800 infrastructure fellowships for policymakers and technical experts to familiarize them with infrastructure projects and their implementation. By pooling together our technical expertise, we are actually enhancing the ability of Indo-Pacific countries to select smart and reliable options. We have also commenced discussions about deploying digital public infrastructure to deliver public goods in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, one very unique Quad initiative has been the STEM Fellowship Program, uh, under which about 100 scholars from four countries have enrolled for courses in American universities. I'm very happy to share with you all that the second cycle of Quad STEM Fellowships has been extended to ASEAN member countries as well. Another priority in recent years has been to broaden the number of stakeholders involved in Quad collaboration. While Quad has been driven by respective governments, if we are to make our work impactful and ensure really tangible outcomes, we need to work closely with industry, uh, with R&D and innovation ecosystems, and with the academia. The private sector-led Quad Investor Network uh, was launched recently with the objective of facilitating business collaborations in critical technologies, renewable energy, climate mitigation, healthcare, and other domains. These partnerships are critical for uh, developing commercially viable and trusted alternatives uh, to uh, which would build and diversify uh, current supply chains. Interestingly, Quad has given birth to some larger collaborations that serve the same objectives of global good. Two of them merit particular attention. One is the Indo-Pacific Maritime Domain Awareness Initiative under which data is being supplied for countering illicit maritime activities and responding to climate-related and humanitarian events. And uh, my colleague, Deputy Secretary Kurt Campbell, spoke about it in his message. The other is the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, which seeks to offer alternative economic engagement mechanisms, and it is making steady progress uh, addressing issues like supply chains, clean economies, sustainability, digital economies, amongst others. India and 13 other countries are negotiating the text of agreements under IPEF. It is heartening to see uh, in, the years, in the recent years that many countries today have actually issued outlooks, policies, and strategies uh, that are aimed at the Indo-Pacific. And I mentioned Australia, Indonesia, France, Japan, Netherlands, EU, Bangladesh, among them. Although each of these policies have a different approach and nuance, they're suited for their particular national circumstances, they all have a single message, which is that they attach importance to their engagement with the Indo-Pacific and underline their desire to, uh, to uphold maritime security and freedom of navigation. We have also seen this translate to enhanced outreach and engagement with countries of the region, to provide more assistance and improve capabilities of the Indo-Pacific countries. In addition, many like-minded partners have visibly inc increased their presence in the Indo-Pacific through many more diplomatic missions, trade, investments, and sometimes visits of na naval assets. Let me, uh, in this context, uh, mention uh, two uh, aspects uh, related to the ASEAN. One, uh, that we have initiatives uh, which may be outside the ambit of Quad, but which broadly support the direction, the, the vision, and the objectives of the Quad. And one of them has been the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, uh, which was launched by India in, in 2009. Uh, and we've really been pleased to see that all our Quad partners and a number of others uh, have today joined uh, in leading or co-leading the eight pillars of this initiative. 
The other aspect which I wish to comment on is the issue of ASEAN centrality, uh, because uh, that has come up both in the context of uh, Indo-Pacific uh, and uh, the Quad. Uh, sometimes it has been suggested that somewhere these two uh, concepts uh, have, uh, have diluted ASEAN centrality. I think anybody uh, who doubts ASEAN centrality when they look at a map of the Indo-Pacific clearly miss their geography classes in school. Uh, so, and not just the geography class, I think they've also probably passed up on all that has been happening uh, in terms of the East Asia summit process, uh, and how that today is, a, uh, is actually a very unique, and I would say irreplaceable uh, architecture uh, for this part of the world. Now, among Quad countries, uh, there is growing comfort in working with each other, uh, given the strong consensus we have in our strategic outlooks. Uh, India's bilateral partnerships with each of these three Quad countries has also transformed in recent years. So it's a very interesting dynamic, which is improving bilateral relations, contribute to Quad, and uh, uh, deepening Quad in turn actually strengthens the bilateral relationship. And you can see this uh, in the elevation of our defense and security cooperation, in growing commercial and economic linkages, in technology collaborations, uh, and in people-to-people -people ties. Uh, our strong commitment to Quad and Indo-Pacific has been uh, clearly a key factor uh, in the uh, deepening of our strategic partnerships with our three Quad partners. Uh, and it is in this context now uh, that I believe uh, the Quad Think Tank Forum uh, should, uh, should uh, undertake and uh, expand the conversations uh, about the Quad. So what are our expectations of the Think Tank Forum? One, clearly to debate more and to generate new ideas uh, for the Quad because the Quad as I explained, is very much in the market for, for different ways, uh, for new ways uh, of actually collaborating. Two, it's important for the think tank to socialize, uh, to promote uh, the Quad, and where required, to reassure uh, others about the Quad. And the third is that it's important that the negative propaganda uh, about the Quad uh, is countered. So with Quad consolidating uh, itself as a platform, uh, I think clearly there's a need for uh, continuously for ideas and perspectives, uh, and this is something which we hope that this forum would uh, generate. Now, as you do so, uh, I think it's important that all of you have clarity about the Quad. So uh, there are three, uh, I would say, uh, clear messages about the Quad which I wish to leave here. One, the Quad is here to stay. Two, the Quad is here to grow. And three, the Quad is here to contribute. So I would urge you all, please help us to make it more contemporary, make it more relevant, uh, make it more impactful. That today uh, is really the best way by which you can associate yourself uh, with what I believe is a very laudable initiative that makes the in not just the Indo-Pacific, but frankly, the world as a whole uh, more fro free and open uh, and, and uh, much more respectful uh, of international law and the rules-based order. Thank you very much for your attention.